Hello and thank you for tuning in to the Local Ea Project, or welcome here if it's your first time. So happy to have you. So I've been checking out some Netherlands videos, and today I'm going to check out one that was highly recommended by you guys. Thank you so much for the recommendations. This one is How the Dutch Created the Netherlands. So without further ado, I'm going to get into this. Subscribe to the channel for more Netherlands videos, or let me know what country you're from, and I would love to react to the country you're from as well. And without further ado, let's just play this video. The saying goes that God created the earth, but the Dutch created the Netherlands. In this video, <laughs> I'm going to show you how. Today, in 2021... Makes sense, because of all the water manipulation and everything. I've already seen a couple videos on the manipulation of the land. And uh, my wife and I watched one that I think I posted already. Maybe I didn't, um, but it'll be posted soon. And it was about that... This whole piece of land right here was created by the Netherlands by building this, which basically turned this into a freshwater lake. Very interesting. One, the Netherlands looks like this, but in 1300, it looked like mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Today, about half of the Netherlands is reclaimed land. The inhabitants of this land that is today modern-day Netherlands have been reclaiming land since at least the 14th century. Some of it was reclaimed by draining lakes, but most of it was acquired by taking it back from the sea. But it hasn't been easy. It's Meanwhile, other countries fight each other over land disputes. Over in the Netherlands, they're like, no, we don't need to fight other countries. We fight the ocean. <laughs> It's taken generations of engineers, many failures, and at least 600 years worth of experimentation for the country to finally be winning its war against the sea. The country sits on the coast of the North Sea and is extremely low in elevation, the lowest country in Europe. The Netherlands doesn't even have a single mountain. Its tallest point stands at just over 1,000 feet. The name Netherlands itself literally means lowland in Dutch. Today, 26% of the country sits... I didn't know that. I didn't know Netherlands meant lowland. ...below sea level. And only about half of the country sits more than one meter above sea level. The country also lies along the delta of several major European rivers. Combined, these physical characteristics have made the Netherlands into one of the most flood-prone countries in the world. Some of these floods resulted in tens of thousands of deaths. One flood in 1530, known as St. Felix's Flood, killed over 100,000 people. These floods, combined with wind, caused the Netherlands coastline to change constantly, and at times quite dramatically. St. Felix's Flood washed 18 villages into the sea, leaving one city stranded on an island before that too was eventually abandoned due to flooding in the following years. But the Dutch fought back. They built dikes to protect the land from being lost, and they took it a step further and built what are called polders. Polders are a piece of reclaimed land from the sea or river. They are created by first building dikes around a wetland. Water is then pumped out of the center. Historically, this was done with windmills. Today, this is done with electric pumps. Reeds are then sown. Today, this is done by aircraft. This helps the soil form. After three years, reeds are burnt and the ash is used as fertilizer for the soil. After a period of up to 15 years... Wow. Um, the video that my wife and I watched, it talked a little bit about this stuff but it didn't talk about it in this much of detail. That's that's very interesting. You know, I'll say it in a minute, because I think, I think the video is about to go there, so I'll say it in a minute. In years, the polder is ready for growing crops, building houses, and constructing roads. These polders are continually maintained to keep from becoming waterlogged from ground and rainwater. Water is pumped out into canals or drained off through side gates. All of this draining causes these polders to sink further below sea level. Much of the Netherlands is covered in peat. When the peat is dehydrated, it exposes the peat to oxygen from the air which causes it to decompose. From 1200 to 1900 AD, the Dutch reclaimed a total of 1,285,000 acres from lakes and the sea, but lost 1,400,000 acres of land to the Zouderzee, a shallow bay of the North Sea. Over the next hundred years, the battle between the Dutch and the sea continued, but the Dutch would finally come out ahead by the end of the 20th century. But again, this wasn't without more hardship. 
In January of 1916, a winter storm broke dikes in several places along the Zauderzee. At the same time, there was a food shortage due to World War I. This was enough for full public and government support to start what is known as the Zauderzee Works. This project had three goals. One, protect the central Netherlands from the effects of the North Sea. Two, improve water management by creating a freshwater lake from the former uncontrolled saltwater inlet. And three, increase the Dutch food supply by development and cultivation of new agricultural land. The first two goals were accomplished with dikes. Planned polders which sit below sea level would not survive without them. The first dike was built here and completed in 1924. The second and largest here. 10,000 workers created this 32 kilometer long and 90 meter wide dike. It rises to seven. I can't even imagine how you would build something like that. Like, I know they've explained it in some of the other videos I've done before, but I just can't imagine doing it. Like, trying to build it up in the sea, I don't even understand how you could do that. But props to the Dutch. The Dutch are probably some of the most innovative people in the world, and Dutch engineering is some of the best in the world, hands down. Um, it's crazy to me because over in the United States, I mean, imagine if we had that, ima imagine if we had that issue in the United States, like imagine if our land was that low and, you know, so much of our land was below sea level with our government, we would be underwater by now because our government takes so long to get anything done. But the Dutch have been staying on top of this for centuries. That's just baffling. 0.25 meters above sea level with an incline of 25% on each side and was completed in 1932. Fresh river water continued to flow and soon flushed out the salt water creating the freshwater lake. Today, this freshwater lake <coughs> functions as a large reservoir, serving as a source for both agriculture and drinking water. This altered environment has had an impact upon the fish and plant ecosystems. The original fishing for herring, anchovies, and flounder has been replaced by freshwater fisheries, chiefly for eels. The change has also been beneficial for Dutch boats, as the freshwater significantly reduces rusting of the hulls. There is also far less buildup of marine growth, so boats need far less coatings of toxic chemicals to keep the growth off. A third dike was built here, which was intended for a polder that was never built. The first polder of the project was a small prototype and was finished in 1929. Four more massive polders followed suit with the last one being completed in 1967. These two polders are now home to over 400,000 people and are its own province called Flevoland, which was officially formed in 1986. Though heavily populated, these polders stick to their original purpose of being mostly used as farmland. These polders have turned this small nation into the second largest food exporter in the world, only sitting behind the United States. Quite impressive for being the 16th densest country in the world and the densest country in Europe. But this modern engineering feat did not end the Netherlands' troubles in the southern Delta region. In 1953, another catastrophic flood hit the country. Strong winds from a storm combined with a high spring tide over the North Sea caused a storm tide. The combination of wind, high tide, and low pressure overwhelmed most sea defenses, breaching dikes and flooding land up to 18 and a half feet above mean sea level. The flood caused widespread damage and 1,836 people in the Netherlands were killed, most of which were in the areas that already relied on sea defenses but had failed. The flood covered 9% of Dutch farmland, an estimated 30,000 animals drowned, and 47,300 buildings were damaged of which 10,000 were either swept away or had to be taken down from extensive damage. The total damage is estimated to have been the modern day equivalent of five and a half billion dollars. The Dutch created a new plan to prevent a flood of this severity from happening again. They called it Delta Works. While the Zouderzee Works was largely for land reclamation, the Delta Plan's purpose was largely defensive. Together, these two works are one of the seven wonders of the modern world. This project would be a series of dams, dikes, and storm surge barriers located throughout the Delta region. It is designed to withstand a once in 10,000 year storm event. 
The original purpose was actually for barriers strong enough to withstand a 1 in 125,000 year storm event, but its costs were deemed unrealistic to build and maintain. The most difficult to build and most expensive section of the Delta Works is a 9 kilometer long dam with a man-made island in the middle. It's based on 65 concrete pillars with 62 steel doors, each 42 meters wide. This dam took more than a decade to complete. One of the most impressive parts of the Delta Works is an opening and closing storm surge barrier located on a ship canal in South <coughs> Holland Province. I told you guys before in one of the videos that I had seen something that opened and closed. This was what it was. It has two 210 meter long barrier gates with two 237 meter long steel trusses holding them. When closed, the barrier will protect the entire width of the canal. It is expected to be closed once every 10 years, but due to sea levels rising, closures will likely occur more frequently. The entire Delta Works project took over 40 years to complete, finishing in 1997. Hypothetically, if all of the dikes in the Netherlands failed, it would look like this. This would include the flooding of Netherlands failed You have Amsterdam completely underwater, Lelystad, that's crazy. It would look like this. This would include the flooding of Netherlands capital city, Amsterdam, which is home to over 800,000 people and altogether 1.5 million people in the surrounding urban area. When Amsterdam was founded around the 12th and 13th centuries, it was located in swampy and unstable land around the Amstel River, so structures could not be built without the risk of them sinking. The residents solved this issue by inserting wooden piles into the ground. Canals were then dug between the structures for transportation and water management. Today, these canals are a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Again, man, the Dutch are so innovative. Dutch engineering for centuries has been, I mean, for them to be able to do that back in those days, that's just, that's wild. So what does the future hold for the Netherlands? Will the Netherlands continue to win its battle against the sea? I hope so. I think so. Will they continue to engineer and create their own landscape? Well, in 2016, the creation process began to construct the Marker Wadden a group of islands designed to establish nature reserves as a replacement to the never-built polder. However, no human occupation is planned for this polder. In 2011, a Dutch journalist jokingly wrote that the Netherlands should build a mountain so its winter sports competitors don't have to train in another country. <laughs> but that wasn't something to joke about to the Dutch population. They oh. actually considered it. But it was estimated to cost $7 trillion, take 30 years, and the mountain's weight would sink the surrounding area. On a more serious note, sea levels are expected to rise due to climate change and will eventually be more than what the current dikes in the country were built to handle. To solve this problem, a Dutch scientist has proposed constructing two massive dams in the English Channel and the North Sea, though this may not be a realistic solution. To fight climate change, the Dutch are raising the dikes they already have, widening rivers giving them more room to overflow, and to a lesser extent are building floating houses. Hopefully this will be enough. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button for more geography related videos. Thank you for watching. Yeah, I enjoyed that video very much. Um, I'm very impressed by Netherlands ingenuity and uh, engineering. It's fascinating. Um, anyways, you know, let me know what I should check out next. Um, it, by the ways, if you live in a, in a Flevoland, if you live in the province of Flevoland, let me know what it's like to live there. I'm kind of curious, you know, what it looks like and, and everything. Anyways, let me know what I should check out next, guys. Thank you so much for joining. I have much, much more Netherlands reaction videos on my channel, so subscribe so you can check those out and so you won't miss the next one. And with that being said, I will see you guys next time. I hope you have a great day.